The purpose of this video is to learn how to read a relative humidity and temperature sensor using our Arduino and then push the results to our screen so we can see the output. In the process we're going to learn how to use the Arduino IDE especially how to download and use libraries which is an essential skill if you're going to try to work with sensors in the Arduino and then also learn a little bit about how humidity and temperature sensors work in the process. So on the screen right now you can see the website where we're at the Adafruit website looking at the SHT31D humidity and temperature sensor. This is a relatively new sensor that's on the market and one that we're going to use uh, a lot today. But there's lots of other good choices. Over here under the down facing camera you can see Here's the SHT31D sensor that we're going to work with quite a bit. Here's another sensor that I really like, the HTU21D by Measurement Specialties. And this breakout board is from SparkFun. And here's the, almost the same sensor, also HTU21D from Adafruit. Now notice the sensors and oh I forgot to mention over here on the left hand side is the SHT15 from Sensiron. Okay, here's the sensor. Now if you look at all these breakout boards, the sensors are only these small chips here. And the rest of this is the breakout board and that means what they've done is added a board so it's easy for us to connect to the sensor and added resistors and capacitors and some level shifting things so it's easy to interface with the Arduino. Because these sensors by themselves are almost impossible to solder to unless you have surface mount technology or know that skill. So these are just breakout boards made by different companies and there's lots of variations in these. If you look on the uh, back to the main screen, again Here's the actual sensor, relative humidity and temperature sensor. And you know, this is the relative humidity and temperature is one of the most important pair of variables to measure in lots and lots of environmental studies, whether you're building a weather station. From a meteorological point of view, the humidity and temperature is real important because from that we can calculate dew point temperature, which is a really important variable. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. How do these things work? Inside here, if we zoom in, zoom in a little bit, inside this actual chip is a polymer film and as relative humidity increases the film absorbs more water molecules as relative humidity decreases it loses molecules and that polymer film is connected to a capacitant circuit and film is acting as the dielectric so as the system absorbs more water, it changes the capacitance. And then the chip measures the capacitance and relates that back to relative humidity. So it's measuring the relative humidity of the air through a capacitance measurement and then outputting a digital word that we can read with the Arduino. One of the things I wanted to show you real quick when you're trying to make decisions about sensors is you need to learn to read the data sheets. Let's look at this ones real quick. Now Adafruit, if you go over here to their downloads spot, they have the data a link to the data sheet. Let's look at it real quickly. So now we're looking at the actual specifications of the sensor made by Sensiron. Here's just some good general information. It's got a wide voltage supply range. It has an I2C interface or an I2C. This is a great interface for the Arduino. Our chip has that capability. Here's probably the most important information. Accuracy. It's plus or minus 2% in the relative humidity and plus or minus 0.3 degrees C for temperature. These are very good specifications. As a person that's done this for a long time, used to who to have a sensor with this kind of accuracy was you know, oftentimes several hundred dollars. It's pretty remarkable that we can buy these things now, uh, even in breakout born packages for in the twelve to fifteen dollar range. We can get lots of other good information from the data sheet. 
even if we're not engineers. We can see basically how it works. Like I said, the sensor is red in terms of capacitance. It goes through an analog to digital converter. Then there's a digital interface where it outputs to two lines, SDA, the data, and the clock signal. And we'll talk more about that later. Let's go down here and get a better look at the accuracy. One thing you want to learn to do is look at these accuracy tables or performance tables. Notice this data sheet is for two sensors. SHT30 and the SHT31. We're using the 31. So you want to make sure you don't get them confused. Notice the SHT31 on its relative humidity performance is lower than the, the 30 is lower than the 31 or, or has uh, greater tolerance. So guess what I'm trying to say is the SHT31 is the more accurate and higher quality sensor. It's really good to learn to use read these graphs. zoom in here a little bit and notice however though this is for the SHT 30 not the 31 so I need to scroll down and try to find the one for the 30 here it is this is showing the tolerance for the SHT 31 for measuring relative humidity we see from 0 to 100 percent relative humidity and this solid line is typical tolerance point or my uh, plus or minus 2 percent so all the, over the full scale of range. Maximal tolerance, this is what, in the, if you happen to get a sensor, the worst case situation would be closer to 2.5% error, okay, with a little bit more problems at this high humidity, okay. So, really good performance. And we can try to find that for temperature, okay, notice. The temperature specifications are for, are for both sensors, both models, and we can see really good tolerance between about 10 and 50 degrees C. Down here about 0.3 degrees C, plus or minus. So pretty good and really good if you're working in what we call the terrestrial temperature range. Uh, you know, a lot of the time for those of us working outdoors and agriculture, or ecology or hydrology biology we're really interested in that this is a really good range for us notice when it gets really cold or really hot uh, the performance declines start getting larger errors although they're not huge it's not rated above 120 degrees C so maybe not a good choice for working in ovens and things of that nature so I encourage you to to not shy away from these data sheets Here's some other really good information about if it's exposed to high humidity, how that might affect it, storage and handling, if it gets submerged in water, all these kinds of things are available on the data sheets. In other words, don't just look at the uh, you know information provided by, let's say, the distributor, although that's useful. Go ahead and look, find the real data sheet and learn about how these sensors work and operate. Always good to work from first principle. Okay, let's go ahead and go back now. One of the things we could do is look at another data sheet really quick. Sorry to keep uh, working on this, but this is so important part of environmental measurement. Here's the hookup guide provided by SparkFun for the HTU21D. Okay, so you could easily work this lesson with the HTU21D instead of the Sinceron. They've also got a hookup guide. They also have the data sheet. Let's go over here and look at its data sheet. A little bit different format, but a lot of the same information. Let's say I'm trying to make a decision on accuracy of the relative humidity sensor. Oh, one cool thing I notice here right away is that they make two versions. One that just has an open window and one that has a Teflon filter. This is really a great feature if you're working outdoors and it's dusty and dirty. Because dust and dirt on your sensor can affect its performance. So having this option to have a Teflon filter is great. And that's exactly what you see here under the down facing camera. Here's the SparkFun version without the Teflon filter. Here's the uh, Adafruit version with the Teflon filter. Okay. So either one. 
depends on your application which one you might choose. But let's go down here and see if we can find that chart on relative humidity error. Looks like here it is. Zoom in a little bit and we can see over this range that we're normally working it also has a um, rated uh, accuracy plus or minus two percent except once you get below 20 or over 100 so not quite as good as the Sinceron and if you look at the maximal tolerance it's three percent over the typical range rather than two and a half so on paper it looks like the Sinceron has a little bit better performance than the HTU21D, but it probably in many cases is not enough to matter. So both of them look like really good options. And so you might, your decision on which sensor or breakout to use might be a function of something else, like its durability or its power consumption or how fast it can collect data things of that nature. Okay, let's get do something fun and actually collect some data. So I'm going to go back here and look at the SHT31D. It's one we're going to primarily use and let's talk let's go over here to Adafruit's wiring and test feature. Here you can see um, the wiring. So let's just start from scratch and wire our system up. Here I've got the Arduino. I'm going to take the SHT31 and attach it to the breadboard. And if we look at this pinouts, we need four wires to hook this up, an input voltage, a ground, these two pins represent the I2C or I2C interface. SCL stands for the clock, SDA stands for the data. These other pins have other functions. One cool thing that the SHT31 is, has is that it's addressable. In other words, we can actually hook two of these up to the same Arduino. A lot of the time you can't do that with I2C, but you can with this one. But let's not worry about that now. So let's go ahead and hook this system up. First thing I'm going to do is establish a ground plane. So I'm going to hook to ground over here and actually hook it to this sidebar on the breadboard. That's going to give me a ground anywhere along here that I want to hook up to. And then I'm going to go ahead and hook up the ground. So now my chip is grounded. Now I need to give it some voltage. This chip is rated for 5 volts. Remember it's very careful to, you have to be very careful to uh, make sure you're applying the right level of voltage. And I can tell you it's very easy to miss these pins along here so try to double check that. Notice I don't have this plugged into my computer while I'm doing this work. Now I'm ready to hook up my data systems. So I'm going to hook up the data pin, which is here. Well, let's hook up the clock first. That's the next one, SCL. The clock pin corresponds to pin A5 on the Arduino or this very outside pin up here. Okay, as shown on the uh, metro diagram. I'm going to go ahead and use this one. And then finally I'm ready to hook up my data pin. Which goes here. So that should be it. That should be all I need to collect data. I'm going to kind of look this over and double check it. Looks okay and now I'm ready to try to write a program or find a program that will allow me to read the sensor. Again, when you're hooking up to I2C, we're going to use that interface a lot. You have two choices on the Arduino, here 
and here. It's not very well labeled up here, so you just have to learn what those are. Okay, here's our Arduino IDE version 1.6.5. We're ready to write some code to read this relative humidity and temperature sensor. Now, communicating with these types of chips over an I2C interface is a fairly complex process. Fortunately, people have written libraries that allow to make that communication easy. Now, what are libraries? Libraries are chunks of code that we can import into our own programs and then use them to accomplish uh, what we need to do. There's a standard libraries that just come with the Arduino. Let me show you those. If you go to sketch and you go to include library, you can see these are the standardized Arduino libraries. That's going to come when you install the IDE. But we can go to this place called manage libraries and import libraries that have been authorized by Arduino and we can also add zip libraries from lots of other sources. Where do your libraries reside? These imported ones? If you go at least in Windows in my documents here's my Arduino this is my sketch folder this is where all my programs this folder is set up automatically when you install the Arduino IDE we click on there. Here you can see I've got lots of programs. But let's look at my libraries. There's nothing in there right now. This is a subfolder in Arduino. So I'm in Arduino, libraries, there's nothing there. Okay. Let's go back here. Now let's bring in a library for the SHT31D. So I'm going to go to Sketch, Include Library, and I'm going to go to Manage Libraries. Okay, this is the library manager. And these are all the authorized libraries. There's a bunch of them for all kinds of different things. Let's do a search for SHT31. Indeed, here the Adafruit library is already authorized and makes it really easy to install. All you have to do is click on this and then install. And it will automatically install the library and you'll see this little install word appear here. This means it's installed. Let's close the library manager. Now if we go back here and look at our include library, notice what's appeared down here. A new library called recommended libraries and it's available for use. Okay. If we go back over to our Arduino folder, sketch folder, and look under libraries. Now there's a subfolder here. Okay, let's open that up and look at it real quick. These are the actual library files: the .cpp and .h. Some README, and most of the time they have some examples. I've got one here called SHT31 Test. That's good news for us because we can do that to see if our chip and our wiring is working. All right. So I'm going to minimize that. Now let's see if we can open up that example. Files, Examples. If we go down here, ah, there's the Adafruit SHT31 library and there's their example code. Let's open up that up and there we go. Let's take a quick look at this sketch. At the top is some comments. Notice they're gray. Three include files. The Arduino H, Wire H, those are standardized libraries, and here's the library we just imported. We start by setting up the object, which the library is going to use. Here's the setup section. Remember, this only is executed one time. The program first starts. What's going on here is we're setting up the serial ports to 9600 bonds so we can send data over USB back to our computer using something called a serial monitor. This next section right here is a little loop that uh, well first it prints out back to our screen that it's doing a test of the SHT31. Then it checks for the SHT31 specifies its address. Remember you can use up to two on the same Arduino here either 
44 or 45. This is a hexadecimal number. And it tries to start it and sees if it can find it. If it can't find it, it just sends out a message, we can't find the sensor and stops. If it does find the sensor, it goes down into this loop. In the loop, it reads temperature and humidity. These commands right here for temperature and humidity are coming from that library that we imported. After it has the data, it comes down here to this section where it's first it checks to see if it's not a number, then print there's some kind of a problem. Uh, if it is a number, go ahead and print the results. See right here where it says serial print temperature, which it retrieved or found up here. Okay, let's just first compile this thing to see if it will compile. It looks like it's going to. That's a good sign. That means that the library probably installed properly. Now let's connect our Arduino. Let's go to Tools and make sure that it connected. It did. COM5. Now let's upload it. It's uploading. Now we're going to go to Tools Serial Monitor. This is where it should be. We should be able to see data coming over from the sensor. Ah, and there it is. That remember this was in the uh, setup, and now here it's looping through the data. Temperature in the room is 22.7, and the humidity is 29.07. Maybe a little bit less on occasion. So there it's scanning. It's working just fine. So we've made it a long way. We've we've imported a library, we opened up the example, we wired our Arduino to our sensor and we're collecting data. So we're well on our way of making environmental measurements. So it's really important that you can get this far for almost any new sensor that you want to try. This is a great way to start if there is examples available to us.